for those that don't know, the integral molten salt reactor, which we call the IMSR, it's a 442 megawatt thermal liquid fueled thermal spectrum graphite moderated pool type MSR. Like most other uh, MSRs, we operate at hydrostatic pressure, 700 degree outlet, 620 degrees inlet. We have refocused on delivering a dual unit IMSR power plant facility. And what that means is we will utilize two reactors, two operating reactors. Each is 442 megawatt thermal, 195 net electrical. Those two reactors, each one of them will power its own balanced plant facility, and there will be a shared control room, other shared site systems between the two of those. So that is the base case, or what others may call the reference plant, will be a dual unit plant. 600 degree industrial heat. We do not use high assay LEU. We may be the only advanced reactor today in industry that is not planning to use high assay LEU in our first deployments. It's important to note that if and when HALU becomes available commercially, we can really quite easily upgrade the plant to a HALU fueled reactor. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We have a seven year fuel cycle length. And with that, because it's an IMSR, we achieve that by literally replacing the entire reactor vessel, fuel system, pumps, heat exchangers, what we call the core unit every seven years. There's a number of reasons why we do that. The two most significant are the materials lifetime characteristics of those components. And the other is due to graphite behavior over time relative to neutron irradiation. It will have a 56 year plant life. That's our initial plant life design, which means we'll install eight core units during the life of that facility. If it's a dual unit facility, obviously times two, so we'd have 16 core units over that one facility's life. About a 17 acre layout. Like many others, we plan that the plant boundary will be the EPZ. Plant is Black Star capable completely. We can load follow at 10% per minute down to 30, back to 100. We can exceed those numbers if we needed to. Below 30%, the steam generators really get sluggish in the modeling that we've done. What goes with that is there are some xenon considerations, but we're very comfortable from 100 to 30 back to 100. We started as a company in 2013, and since then, we've developed a very comprehensive advanced reactor design process for this audience, primarily within North America. It defines the entire technology development program. It encompasses all the research, the R&D, the analysis, engineering, everything that we will need for development of the plant. Today, we are undergoing basic engineering, and in some cases, we are into detailed engineering and basic engineering for the plants on schedule for completion this year. There's not a break point there. We'll actually just continue progressing with engineering of the plant and move into the detailed engineering phase. And for those folks that attended this MSR workshop last year, you heard Dave Hill, Chief Technology Officer within Terrestrial Energy USA here in the U.S., talk about a buy versus make program. We congratulate everybody, all of the other developers that are making R&D. It's important to do that. However, our focus is strictly on commercialization of a molten salt reactor. And therefore, we buy our R&D wherever we can find it. And I'll talk specifically about much of that ongoing work in terms of R&D, because I think that's likely of most interest to this particular crowd. We are on schedule for deployment before 2030. We are completely engaged with suppliers for a multitude of the components that are critical for success. That includes the graphite, the pumps, the reactor simulator, our fuel, the balance of plant side, our steam generators, turbine equipment. All of those agreements are being put in place. Some of them are in place. Again, if you've read the headlines over the last month or a month and a half, you'll know that we've signed fuel development agreements with Westinghouse and with National Nuclear Laboratory in the UK. And just a couple of weeks ago, we announced a similar agreement with uh, Arano to also be engaged with us on the fuel development and fuel supply for the IMSR. I think this entire crowd should be excited. The IMSR, or in general, a molten salt reactor is in the race as one of three designs to be selected by Ontario Power Generation in Canada, in Ontario. 
It's important to note that OPG is currently the only utility customer that is actively engaged in the process of selecting a technology with a full intention to build a new reactor at one of their reactor sites, in this case at the Darlington site. So MSR is on the list. I personally believe this is my personal opinion. Molten salt reactor has a clear advantage over the current competition that we're up against there within uh, OPG. I believe that we'll hear news maybe by the end of the year. So I would just I would suggest that we will hear the news maybe the same time everybody else hears the news. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a IMSR. Regulatory pro progress that we're making, we're on two paths. One path is the, the uh, Canadian Vendor Design Review. Uh, we will complete uh, all of our actions for phase two of that VDR this year. We'll receive the CNSC's formal report sometime early in 2022. It'll be up to the regulator in their timing is when we'll receive that. We're also working with the US NRC here in the US. Our approach is to submit late in 2023 a standard design approval package for just the core unit. We've chosen uh, some time ago that we would take the path of a major portion of a nuclear power plant under 10C part 52. And the reason being is when you look at the IMSR, the most significant regulatory risk lies in the replaceable core unit. So that's where we are going to focus NRC's attention so that with a receipt of a standard design approval of that core unit, we feel we will have discharged or put to rest a significant portion of the regulatory risk associated with IMSR. And that then can become a prerequisite to a Part 50 construction permit or could possibly be used for a Part 52 COLA. That decision would be made by a utility partner. We are engaged in the joint CNSC NRC collaborative regulatory review actions that are ongoing. We'll be wrapping up our first project here probably within a couple of months relative to postulated initiating events for IMSR. Within uh, graphite qualification, we're working with uh, the Joint Research Center in Europe, uh, Fraser Nash and Virginia Tech in the US. And just some of the attributes that we're looking at in terms of qualification with that is pore size, purity, density. I'm sure it's the same graphite characteristics that others are looking at as well. We are buying, we are not making. Alloy qualifications, familiar name there. Virginia Tech again is working alloy qualification with us. John Cockerell, ONGI Laboratory in Europe and the CRM group also in Europe. Galvanic corrosion, flow assisted corrosion, corrosion from impurities, and then the list goes on and on in terms of alloy qualifications. Fuel qualification, we're testing, qualifying, and verifying likely the same suite of parameters that all others will do or are doing. And here you can see there's a much larger team of laboratories. Again, Virginia Tech, ANGI, the Idaho National Lab, Argonne, Oak Ridge, the JRC, and the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories. And I want to point out, I'm not sure if there is anybody in the workshop from the GAIN initiative within DOE, but all of this work in particular, the uh, National Laboratory work, this started with receipt of a GAIN voucher a number of years ago, which was a couple hundred thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. That one GAIN voucher was really the seeds for what now are 11 laboratory projects that were working with those three national laboratories. Out of those 11, Two are currently underway. Some have been completed. Uh, four are pending DOE laboratory approval right now, and four more are undergoing negotiations of work scope. So that one gain initiative voucher that we received has resulted in over $4 million in private capital flowing to the national labs under SPPs and doing so, we're able to leverage those very outstanding laboratory capabilities that if reside in the GOE. And we appreciate very much the other Gain's opportunity they gave us a number of years ago to get to this point. Joanna, that was my last slide.